Hi, we're at the 2025 Naval Group's Innovation Days. The French naval shipbuilder is not only working on the unmanned systems, but is now weaponizing them to answer the needs of navies worldwide. To find out more, I meet again with Pierre Antoine. Pierre Antoine, great to see you. Hello, Xavier, great to see you again. The Sequest uh, family of USVs was unveiled about a year ago by Naval Group. You are now, for the first time, showcasing it with uh, various uh, well, sensor and weapon systems uh, fitted on board. Can you tell us more? Yeah, so, um, well, weaponization of unmanned systems now is really a key technological step that we're all trying to uh, cross uh, in the unmanned business. Um, on the Sequest S, which is the platform developed by Naval Group subsidiary Sirena, we're working on various payloads depending on missions. So, obviously, we're working on anti-submarine warfare with either depth charges or very lightweight torpedoes that could be deployed from the USV. We're also looking into anti-surface warfare with various panels that basically enables you either to deal with an asymmetrical type of threat, typically another USV or a suicide ship, all the way up to being able to um, alter the capacity of a larger ship, for example, uh, challenging its radar capabilities or its communication capabilities. So for that, we're looking into either light missiles, rockets, or light artillery. In the anti-air domain, we're also exploring some capabilities here with basically surface-to-air small uh, rockets or uh, missiles. And, um, and so typically in the electronic warfare uh, spectrum, we're also working into jamming capabilities. Uh, to make sure that we can use the USV either as a decoy or as uh, a um, jamming capability that's beyond the Naval Task Force. Pierre-Antoine, in, in order to uh, deploy some of those effectors, are you using uh, Naval Group's uh, future uh, MPLS or a small size of it? Uh, I think that's what you're showing on the poster behind us. Yeah, so we're really trying to use whatever technology is ready available. With Naval Group's MPS, you're going to have rocket casings and we're actually using these casings, which is what you see here in the back, uh, to deploy very rapidly this technology on our uh, USV but not the whole system itself, which would be more suited for M or L USVs. And for anti-submarine warfare, you can deploy uh, sonars? Yeah, so we're currently uh, running at Repmus with uh, anti-submarine capability, uh, deploying sonar buoys. Uh, the ship has the ability also potentially to deploy uh, fixed sonars, um, still to be explored. It's part of the modularity of the concept itself. Pierre Antoine, on the topic of anti submarine warfare, Naval Group this year is uh, showcasing uh, two new innovations or new products. Uh, can you tell us more first with this uh, very small, looks very small for a torpedo, very small torpedo? Yeah, so weaponizing USVs is not only about the USV system itself, but it's also what kind of weapon you're going to put on. So we're really actively working into trying to address new threats, so typically on the lower end of the spectrum, and also being able to put weapons on platforms that are much lighter, much cheaper, be their UXVs or also lighter airplanes or lighter aircraft in general. So what you see here in front is uh, one of uh, Naval Group's innovation. It's the very lightweight torpedo. Comes in two different products, a torpedo version here and a depth charge or aerial anti-submarine grenade that we can use. The charge is the same itself, so it's really about building uh, the same, using the same technological blocks there um, and it's basically targeted against, well it's built to target UUVs, uh, light USVs for example, or even uh, classic submarines. And it, uh, it's quite relevant because of course you would not use uh, larger expensive torpedoes against a UUV because the cost factor is, uh, yeah. doesn't make sense. Absolutely, what we're really trying to address is both the cost to kill making sure that navies have adapted weapons to get the cost to kill they're trying to look at and, also, and so bringing in this high-low mix. But we're also thinking from an industrial point of view, being able to produce these systems in much larger quantities rapidly to make sure that we can meet the needs of the navies in the higher intensity spectrum. Are these two products ready today or they are still under development? So these products are still under development, however they are being tested at sea. Uh, and they are waiting for contract clients to move on to the next stage.
Last but not least, Naval Group is also working on well UAVs, uh, which is quite unusual, I guess, for a shipbuilder. Uh, so what is this UAV? Uh, so this is a UAV that can change environment, so it basically can work both in the air, floating on the surface, or go submerged. And the way um, we've worked on this is really showcases how Naval Group is collaborating with navies to get concepts and equipment out rapidly. So this has been developed in just about under 18 months, directly with the Belgian Navy. We work in a common lab with the University of Brussels, the Belgian Navy, and Naval, and Naval Group's Belgian subsidiary within the MCM lab. Um, the way we've thought about this capability was starting by a very basic uh, use case, which was we want to measure signatures of the ship, acoustic signatures or electromagnetic signatures, so we needed something that could go dipping and that move quite rapidly. From this concept that has been tested and learned very rapidly, we went on into thinking what other opportunities we could develop and moved into the ISR domain, obviously bringing some very covert capabilities, both within air and subsurface medium, and now working on concepts uh, such as light attack. So this is typically one of the weapons you would want to embark on your Sequest S. You can get a swarm of these in front, get the Sequest S to give you the range, and then launch them, have them submerge, wait for a ship to come through. They jump out of the water and will go attack one of the vital equipments of the ship, so typically radar or communication systems. And attack with the, the payload, the gray payload we see underneath it. Yep, so the gray payload here is, is one example of the volume you could take for uh, explosives. Oh, that's. Uh very interesting and uh, first time I see uh, such, a, such a device, so uh, quite interesting. What's the current TRL for this? Uh, so now this is ready to go into industrialization mode. So it's, we've done all the prototyping and testing and uh, again working with uh, some clients to move into the production phase. Well, Pierre Antoine, thank you very much. Thank you.